My name is Jaden Wilson, and you're watching Mass and Tiger football only on WHS TV. The Eye of the Tiger. It's the most highly anticipated game in Division II, perhaps across the entire state, here on this gorgeous Friday night. The Division II Region 5 Final. It's the Massillon Tigers and the Archbishop Hoban Knights in a rematch of last year's state championship. I'm Brendan Gulick alongside former John Carroll quarterback Doug Phillips. Infocision Stadium still filling up as we get ready for opening kick tonight. Hoban in the white, they kick things off. It's a pooch kick, and we are underway, Doug. Two teams that, frankly, don't like each other a whole lot and are very excited for the start of this game. And there's so much tradition. I mean, if you're if you're from the state of Ohio and you have any interest in football whatsoever, these two schools, Maslin with decades of history and Hoban with even more recent uh, sustained success, this is going to be an incredible matchup. And I think, like you said earlier, everybody's excited to see it. We're going to see Maslin's offense first. Maslin undefeated. They are 12-0 and trying to knock off an Archbishop Hoban team that last year knocked him around pretty good in the opening half, but Maslin put together a, a pretty good full contest and uh, made that state championship game close, but that first state title still elusive. You know, we talked to both coaches this week, and, and for as much as there is history and, and everything that goes into these programs, Every year presents new challenges, and you have brand new teams, and, and young men from 15 to 18 years old, you never know what you're going to get on any given night. Aiden Longwell hands it off to Terrence Keyes. Those are two names you're going to hear all night long. Aiden Longwell has just about every passing record that you can come up with at Massillon. And Terrence Keyes, Jr., who's in his first year running for the Tigers after spending the last couple of years at nearby uh, Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary, he's the feature tailback, and they are the engine that make this Tiger team go. And they're going to move quickly here. Tempo is going to be something that they're going to utilize throughout the course of the night. Longwell looking to throw. He wants to air it out deep over the middle, and it is intercepted. Picked off on the second play of the game. That is Cordell Cobb for Hoban on the big play here, just two plays into this ball game. Longwell was looking for the Ohio State recruit, Jaden Ballard. They were just going deep here. Ballard, Ballard just can't quite get back under that one great defensive position there by the cornerback from Hoban, the senior Cordell Cobb, and now Hoban with a quick opportunity to change the, the direction of the game. Boy, how about that? Hoban wins the toss, elects to defer, and then decides that they'll, uh, they'll take the football first to start the second half, and after two plays, the baseball commit at Kent State and quarterback for Massillon Tiger football, Aiden Longwell, throws a long... Momentum changing plays early in this game. This is what high school football is all about. You, you draw up plays, you talk about players, you talk to coaches, watch some film, and you think one thing, and guys, it's, it's young men out there playing football. Take a look. Longwell drops back. It looked like a little bit of miscommunication. He was looking for Ballard to come in a little bit earlier than he thought. And, and the ball just sailed on him a little bit. Davis right there to make that play. Got to the sideline like every defensive back is coached to do on turnovers. Get to the sideline, let your guys protect you in the wall. Great field position now for Hoban. Longwell's thrown two first quarter interceptions after throwing five picks the first 12 games of the year. Here's the big man, Diamante Trainum, with a flag thrown back near the line of scrimmage. He gained six but the Arizona State commit looks like it's coming back. What a game. You know, you and I are going to be mentioning it all night. A couple of these guys getting looked at, getting offers, being committed. A Division two game where you've got five, six. You've got five, six guys that, that, that have legitimate D1 offers and, and more probably to come. That holding penalty called against Ernest Witcher tight end for Hoban. He's a replacement for Caden Clark, and we'll talk about him a little bit. He's another one of those guys. That's an, Al that's an Alabama recruit. He's committed, signed with Alabama. Hoban lost him in week nine. Archbishop Hoban's only slip up this year came in week three against the St. Ignatius Wildcats. 
42-41. They had a 25-point lead in that game. Other than that, they've been perfect. Ham airing it out. What a catch! It's Braden Fox! Touchdown, Knights! Got some big time players on the outside for Maslin, but number three, Braden Fox. That's Hoban's answer right here. Big plays all year long, averaging over 20 yards a catch, and here's another one. They got by the free safety. Perfect football there from Shane Ham. And hey, Braden Fox goes up and makes a play. He's getting some looks from Big Ten schools as a junior. Extra point away from tying things up with 4.39 left in the opening quarter. What a start. Both teams have created turnovers. Both teams have struck on long touchdown throws. And the rematch of last year's championship tilt tied at seven late in the first. Big plays all around. You look at some of the statistics. You look at average average yards per carry, average yards per catch. These are big play offenses, and that's what you see with these, these FBS recruits. It's speed, it's execution, it's quarterbacks putting the ball in the right place. Talking a little bit more about Braden Fox. You know, the name might sound familiar to those of you from the Stark County area. He's got he's got a lineage, right? He's got sure a lineage of, of some pretty excellent football players. That's uh, a pretty impressive football family. Probably the most notable, Dustin, who played, uh, of course, at the Ohio State University, won a national championship there. Had a cup of coffee in the NFL for a couple of years. But Braden trying to make a name for himself, no doubt. It was interesting, Coach Terrell said, and this is a piece of the competitiveness that you love to see. Even though grandpa, <laughs> uncle, all these different guys in your family, and what Coach Terrell said is, Braden wants to be the best Fox. That's all you need to know. And not just the best guy on your team, not That's the best right. guy in your, in your county, the best guy in your family, which, which says an incredible amount. He wants to sit around the Thanksgiving dinner table someday and say, hey, I had, uh, I had the best career. From the 23-yard line, Maslin will take over from the 36 after it was fielded by the up man, Darian Williams, but a flag a little deeper than that. So Aiden Longwell's thrown two picks for Maslin. Hoban turned it over on a fumble on the kick return that they had after that touchdown. We are tied at seven. Waiting for the call. There is no foul on the play. All right. And so it's first and 10 for the Tigers just outside the 35 yard line. Along with Doug Phillips, former John Carroll quarterback and Brendan Gulick. Looking forward to what will be the uh, conclusion of the season in the next couple of weeks. Key's still on his feet. And he's able to pick up 13 yards just shy of midfield here. The winner of this game will play either Avon or Avon Lake in the state semifinal next week. The last couple of years, that's been Archbishop Hoban against Avon. They go right back to the ground game. Not quite as effective that time around. And then the state championships coming up December 5th, 6th, and 7th. From not terribly far from where we are here in Akron over at the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton. Such a, you know, again, I mentioned it at the outset. Ohio's such a great football state. No and doubt. to be able to bounce back and forth between Ohio Stadium and the Hall of Fame Stadium there at Fawcett. It's an, an incredible experience for these guys. Look at Keyes off to the races, and he gets upended. Terrence Keyes Jr. with a flag down when hurtling over a defender. And that one's right at the end of the run. It's going to be interesting to see what they call here on, on the hurtling. It looked athletic, but there are rules in place for player safety, and I think that's what they're going to get there for Keyes. Keyes couldn't believe it. He's, am he's amped up, right? You Should know, we're be. Try trying to get him going. Trying to get him going. He finally gets a little bit of daylight and wants to try to finish that, that run with a bang. So they're going to march him back. Personal foul on the offense, number six, for Hurley. It's a 
Well, Terrence Keyes Jr. is uh, not somebody that Archbishop Hoban is unfamiliar with because they used to see him over at St. Vincent St. Mary. There was a jump there on the defensive line, but no contact made. So Hoban knew that they at least had some film on Keyes. This time he runs right through the middle and gets absolutely popped. Big time hit by the linebacker we mentioned him earlier, Daryl Peterson. It is enough for a Maslin first down though. Just a straight ahead run there. Looked like an inside zone play trying to create some seams and the Hoban defense did a nice job maintaining their gaps. And that's something Coach Terrell talked about was just being disciplined, right? How, how do you sustain success for this long? And it's all about discipline. Yeah, players come and, and players go, and you get a lot of talented guys, but it's all about teaching those fundamentals and gap responsibility. Well, Hoban came flying off the edge that time and denied Zion Pfeiffer a chance to get past the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 10 coming from the 40. Final two and a half minutes here in the opening quarter. Both teams with long first quarter touchdown passes. Braden Fox caught the game tying score for Archbishop Hoban after Maslin's 53 yard touchdown pass from Longwell to Wilson Lamp. Longwell airs it out near side. This one's caught. Wilson Lamp makes a guy miss and he gets out of bounds. It's a gain of 12 and a first down. It's another element that makes a team like Maslin so dangerous. We've seen a couple times trying to go over the top. They've got the controlled run game, but then to get a guy like Wilson Lamp or Jaden Ballard, just a ball out in the flat on a simple hitch route and let him do his thing. Shook that first defender the first time and picked up an extra couple. Makes it the offense so dangerous. Longwell turns and hands to Keyes, who's got some space. He broke one tackle and got another seven yards out of it after Damon Allison couldn't wrap him up. Carry on Davis on the tackle. It's another Tiger first down. Take a look at the offensive line play here. Zone play out to the right with the fullback whamming to the backside. Allows for a gap there in that front seven from Hoban. It's all you got to do with a guy like Keyes is just get him a little gap and, and, and let him use his vision. Keyes back there again. He shakes away from Bauer and runs into a pile of Knights around the 10. Should be a gain of four, second and six coming. Final minute and a half here of the first quarter. Same play right there as they called on the, on the previous one. When teams use tempo like Maslin does, a lot of times, hey, they get a gain of seven, they get a gain of eight. Here you go, zone, zone play out to the right, fullback whamming to the backside. The previous play hit out to the right side, but there, Keyes uses his vision, cuts back to the left, and makes a positive play out of something. Clock is ticking down in the stadium here from 107. Fake handoff works perfectly, and the Tigers punch it in for six. Great play action fake, and a touchdown on the screen pass to Zion Pfeiffer. How about this? Three plays, three plays in a row. You call the same run play twice with 29 Pfeiffer whamming to the backside and then play action, exact same look, and now Pfeiffer slips out underneath. Excellent play design by the Tigers. You set them up, you set them up, and take the shot for your touchdown. Extra point from Bauer is perfect. And the Maslin Tigers have a two touchdown, or I should say a one touchdown lead. So take a look there, look at Pfeiffer just slip under side. He blocked that same defensive end the previous two plays. So now that defensive end thinks, hey, Pfeiffer's coming to get me again. I, I, gotta, I gotta shake him, I gotta get him loose so I can go get, go get uh, Mr. Keys. And all of a sudden Pfeiffer's outside of you and waltzes into the end zone. Well, we feel like we need to address it at least because it made news locally, but certainly don't want to dwell on it. But uh, there was a legal issue that involved Terrence Keyes Jr., Doug, uh, that came to light last night. And I know there were some fans that were wondering whether or not he's going to be able to play. And I think uh, perhaps taking it from this particular standpoint, as a young man, considering what he's, what he's been through 
and you can certainly read up on it if you so choose to. But considering what he's been through, to mentally prepare for a game of this magnitude and to go out and execute here early on the way he has is pretty impressive. It is, and it's not just him. It's, it's the entire team. It's a distraction. It could be a distraction. And so far, this Maslin team is responding very well. He's out there. He's playing. The team is, is playing how they normally do. And I think we, you know, so we, we move on from there. Just inside a minute to go here in the first quarter. Maslin Tigers lost last year to this Archbishop Hoban team. And look, we've talked about the 61-4 and four that Archbishop Hoban put together since the beginning of 2015. But it's not like you haven't seen a, a similar level of success from Archbishop Hoban. Nate Moore, 48-14, and 14, including back-to-back 10-0 regular seasons and a 36-5 and 5 mark over the last three years. So he's had, uh, in particular lately, some pretty impressive teams. A little misdirection handoff here. And Dawson able to pick up maybe just one. It, you know, and, and that's why Coach Moore was brought here. It, you don't see it very often in high school football. High school football coaches basically stay in their county. Stark County, Stark County coaches stay in Stark County. Uh, Cuyahoga County coaches stay there. They brought up Nate Moore from down in the Cincinnati area after he won a, a state title down there. And, and, and he comes up here, but that, that speaks to the tradition of this particular program. You bring in a guy like Nate Moore, and he's changed the attitude, he's changed that culture back to what that tradition has always been. Hoban trying to answer the Maslin score and tie the game back up. Only completion dangerously thrown across the middle toward Diamante Trainum with just 12 seconds left in this first quarter. Little RPO there, run pass option. You see it at all, all the time now at every level. Quarterback gives a fake on the run play. It's so valuable when you have a running back like Hoban does. Fake the running play and just read the linebacker or read the safety from there. Sean Parnell, sophomore wideout, checks in. He's had a productive campaign. Hoban goes to the four receiver set, third and nine. They need to 32. That's Dawson in the backfield, leaking out. Ham over the middle, and he's got a first down. Great diving effort. Jared Mealy, the reception. Great possession play call there by Hoban. They saw cover two. The way to attack cover two is get to that middle of the field. See if you can get to the seam to take advantage of that Mike linebacker trying to work back into space. Mealy, great 10 yard in route, just past the sticks, picks up the first down. What a first quarter. Back, back and forth down the field. You know, we had to expect this coming in with as many big time players, big play guys that were out here. And, and sure enough, we've had a couple fireworks. Maslin 14 and Archbishop Hoban 7 as we take a look at a few highlights here from the first quarter. Obviously certainly had some highlights and some low lights, but this was the first long ball thrown down the middle that Andrew Wilson Lamp brought in from 53 yards. That was the second interception Longwell threw. And it was brought back an awfully long way by Carrion Davis. All the way back to the 30-yard line, which enabled Hoban to have a short field. Shane Ham to Braden Fox for six. So we've seen a little bad, a little good from Aiden Longwell. Here's another example of the good, the short naked off of that zone wham series. Zion Pfeiffer for the touchdown to give the Tigers the lead. All right, so we start the second quarter. Hoban with a football running off to the right-hand side, and here is Trainum across the 40-yard line. I want to know if you have ever seen a high school running back who puts up these kind of numbers. 365 he max, uh, maxes out on the bench press, and he squats 595 pounds, which is a 320 pound increase from when he was a freshman. Trainum listed at six feet 230. He is an animal. Not all my college teammates <laughs> could do that as three or four year olders than this young man. I mean, he, he's, he's just a, he's a workhorse. He's a workhorse, gifted athlete. Trainum to the near side, cuts it back over the middle. 
And he's got a first down after Maslin makes a nice tackle. Can credit that stop there to T.J. Williams. So you're an athlete, right? And, and you're big and strong and fast. But, but check out the vision, right? You're getting him out here in space on the outside. And to be able to turn that thing back in when you feel like things are shutting down on the outside, that's what makes a guy so special. And, and that separates some of the players at this level. You see train him there getting a breather. I'll tell you what, because Hoban has gone through some injury-related adversity this year, it's enabled some other guys to step in like Victor Dawson, who we've seen tonight too. Nice throw and a great catch. First down Knights. Another target for Jared Mealy. Comes back over the middle and grabs one that goes for almost 20 yards. I was wondering who was gonna step in for this Hoban Knights offense to take the place uh, of Caden Clark, right? Caden Clark had 27 catches for over 500 yards and six touchdowns. And, and so I'm wondering, hey, what other weapons are we gonna have here on the outside? And so far, two huge first down catches there for Mealy. Fourteen seven Tigers, couple minutes into the second quarter. Ham on the option play, tucks it. And he's tackled by Luke Murphy for a pickup of about nine, second down and one coming. Both these last two series, you've seen both of these offenses start to attack the outside. A speed option play like this with Ham, great opportunity there. You're putting a guy in space, number three, Preston Hodges. He's had a great year for the Tigers, but it's still difficult with when there's nobody else out there to help you, you're one on two. You've got the quarterback in Ham, and you've got a dangerous running back out there in Vic Dawson. Vic Dawson, especially the last few weeks, it's been silly how, uh, how effective he's been. Give you his season numbers in a minute, but first, Shane Ham taken down on a great tackle by linebacker Caden Woolard. What a year, what a year for Caden Woolard. First of all, before we get back to Vic Dawson, but you know, that play right there by Woolard, he's just a junior, he plays the OB position. OB is the name of the mascot for the Tigers. He plays the OB weak side defensive line position. 14 tackles for a loss. That was number 15 right there for the young man. Unbelievable how effective he's been, isn't it? Dawson on the year, 101 carries coming in. He's averaging more than 10 yards a carry. 1,020 yards, 13 touchdowns. He's got a thousand, or I should say, a hundred more rushing yards than Diamante Trainum. And yet, it's Trainum who takes a lot of the spotlight as Archbishop Hoban calls their first charge timeout. 8.37 left here in the uh, second quarter. It'll be third down and short coming up. But th this one two punch from Dawson and Trainum, you would think Hoban probably feels like they can run the football on just about anybody. But I know in talking with you this week how much you like the Maslin defensive line. I do. And, and it's guys, it's guys like Woolard, right? 14 tackles for loss, five sacks. There, there's a penetration potential there. It, as I looked across the stats preparing for the game, there's a ton of tackles for losses. That means the defensive front is doing something right to all of all of their opponents. Um, and, and so again, that was one of the matchups that I was looking forward to, to see Hoban wants to run the ball. You said it, a pair of thousand yard backs, and they want to run the ball, they want to establish that. So how was that going to, how was that gonna match up ultimately against this power running game for the Knights? Well, so far, Hoban hasn't been able to move the football particularly well on the ground. This has easily been their best uh, rushing drive so far. Prior to this drive, they only had eight rushing yards total. Maslin is running for 74 yards. Ham needed the 20. I think he's a full yard short. I do as well. And, and again, we mentioned Ham could run the ball. And whenever you get your quarterback running, uh, an offensive coordinator thinks you got some, some numbers, Mitch matches inside. You send Vic Dawson up there as a lead backer, and it looked like Dawson, it, it looked like Ham turned inside a little bit earlier and away from that lead blocker. All right. Early game decision for Hoban. They're going to go for it on fourth and one. They've gone all this way. See if they can find a way inside the 20. Trainum is the third back in the eye, and Tim Tyrell calls timeout. 
important, right, crucial. A a every single drive, every single opportunity to get points is going to be absolutely critical. You know, we asked, we asked this week, talk to us about special teams. What, what, can, we, what can we talk? And, and both coaches just, it didn't say anything negative. Sure. But I think both of these coaches are part of this newer, newer wave of, hey, let, let's go for it. Let's take some chances. You're seeing it at every level of football. From the New England Patriots on down, you're seeing it. You get into scoring positions. You can call it a green zone on the field. When you start looking at probabilities, hey, we can get this yard. The probability of getting this yard or, or hey, we turn it over and Maslin gets it on the 21. But still, you want to make sure you have the right play called. And right here, Hoban's coming out in an unbalanced formation. If you take a look, they've got three offensive linemen on the right side of the formation and They've there. got Walter Gainis, that big left tackle as the play gets blown dead. Maslin calls a timeout. So considering you see back-to-back -back timeouts like this, I think you're understanding now as a fan how important this play is to both sides. Coach Moore mentioned it. There's a chess match that goes on. For, for as much as this is about the young men on the field, you know, there, there's still some coaches, and, and, and both of these head coaches talked about how much they value their, their coaching staffs. And, and there's a reason for that. They put in the time. They, they're watching film throughout the course of the week. And so to come out here and make sure that you're in that right, you're in that right set on defense, you're in the right formation, all the time when you're at, when you're on the headsets talking with the play caller, you're talking about what's our best play, what do we like here? Well, real quick, Hoban loves their offensive tackles, but Tim Turrell has talked about how much growth the middle of the offensive line has had to go through this year. Now they come out and spread everything out. Totally different look for the Knights. Victor Dawson is to Ham's left, and he's got a first down and more. Ham down toward the six. Taking advantage again. This is the second time we've seen the speed option play. You're putting the defense out in an isolated position. Let's get outside the box. Let's get it down to a one-on-two -on -two matchup if we can. And the simplest option is always for that quarterback to keep the ball, tuck it away, fall forward for at least one. But he picks up a big gain there down to the six. Well, considering how dangerous and explosive Maslin's offense is and how long Hoban's had the football here, pretty critical that they come away with points on this drive. Power set here. They're going to turn around and hand it to Dawson. He runs into a pile of humanity after picking up maybe two yards. Second and goal coming up. That last speed option gave uh, gave Ham five carries for 29 yards. So that's something I, I think Hovind has seen early here. Again, getting isolated out on the side as opposed to that last play that you just saw, trying to trying to run with the running backs up through the middle of this front. Um, so we're going to continue to see that a little bit, showing showing Shane Ham's legs and seeing what he can do to take advantage of some things against the Tigers. Alongside former John Carroll quarterback Doug Phillips, I'm Brendan Gulick. Division II Region 5 final. State semifinals on the line for both of these two teams. And off goes Dawson toward the goal line. He is in. Hoban within a point. It's 14 13. This is an incredible one two punch like we talked about earlier in this drive. You got a big, strong guy like DeMonte Trainum, and you feel equally confident on the four yard line with Vic Dawson. And he shows you why there. Just ran over a guy right on the one yard line. Dawson with his 14th rushing touchdown of the year. He and Trainum each have been in the end zone 14 times. Archbishop Hoban, extra point on the way from Charlie Durkin. No problem. And the sophomore ties the game at 14. Both teams have gotten through some early adversity with some uh, perhaps uncharacteristic turnovers, and they've both gone back to running the football well. Yeah, and, and that's going to be one of the other things, too, ball control. For as much as we talk about how, how explosive these plays are, as we see the replay on the touchdown here, just an excellent run by Dawson. Nice job by that young offensive line from Hoven to score the football. but. Controlling the football, keeping it away from the opposing offense. 
talked to Coach Terrell this week and just general, right, not too specific. How, what do you plan to do against the Tigers? Such a powerful, explosive offense. What do you plan to do? Well, we're not always going to stop them. They're going to score some points. Not always going to stop them. But that on offense, that drive, to take a couple minutes of game time off the clock to keep it away from those dangerous guys is really critical as well. And I think the longer that each team has the football as these scoring drives get longer and longer, it's that much more important that they find ways to get points out of it. You don't want to have the ball for five minutes in a game of this magnitude, march all the way down the field and come up empty. So far, so good on both sides. There's T.J. Williams with a little space, and boy, did that close quickly. He got popped on the kick return. Devontae Baskerville with a tackle. And Archbishop Hoban's defense comes back out on the field. 6.25 left in the first half of a 14-14 contest. Love seeing special teams. You know, in programs like this, you see a little bit of a glimpse into the future. Who are these guys that are out there that are going to maybe make some plays in, in the following year? Taking a look at this Maslin offense coming back out, Jaden Ballard, we, uh, you know, quarterback has missed a couple of times. We'll see if they can get him involved early in this drive. Hard to do that when you give Keys the football, and he goes for 13 and a Tiger first down. You're right, Ballard really hasn't had to do much tonight because Keys is carrying the load. The wing back pulls into the middle there, and it's basically a lead ISO play on the linebacking core of Hoban, giving Keys an impressive seam up the middle. By the way, the winner of this game, we told you, gets Avon, Avon Lake. They are tied at three with five minutes left in the first half. And that was a battle in early in the season. Was it week one, I week think, one, they yep. played? And kind of weird. 10-9 game? Yeah, kind of weird they played that game so early considering the rivalry there. Well, good job by the linebacking core, penetrating nicely. Bryce Sizak on the tackle. Pfeiffer just barely got back to the line of scrimmage on a second effort. Taking a look, just great penetration there. You know, one-on-one -on -one -on -one battles. He, he did a nice job of, of holding his inside gap, holding that A gap, fighting through, and making the play on Pfeiffer. Aiden Longwell had nine different football offers, but he decided baseball was his future at Kent State, and Nate Moore was fully behind that this week. Said he's awfully proud of Longwell for making that decision. But Longwell certainly wants to finish his career as a Tiger in, uh, in fun fashion. That's a carry for about three. He was just named the Stark County Player of the Year earlier this week, and for good measure numbers he's put up this year are, are just video game like he is an impressive guy to watch and and to you know to learn that he's going to play baseball he steps up into the pocket uh, he's got a strong arm it's not easy brendan throwing to guys with the speed of a ballard or a wilson lamp it's not easy you got to get that ball out there if they're running if they're running past defenders so it's really impressive to watch but it, it i think it tells you a lot about his character and he knew what he wanted to do and he wanted to go play some baseball on third down, Longwell under duress, and down he goes. Luke Bauer wrapped him up around the ankles, and the Tigers have to punt. I'll tell you what, credit for that sack is going to go to Michael Hayden, the junior linebacker, crossing route intended for Wilson Lamp, and you see him there laying down right at the 50. Crossing route, it's a legal play, and Michael Hayden laid some wood there to disrupt that crossing route from the Tigers forcing the punt. Tiger punt coming from Magnus Haynes to Sean Parnell. Got it away in time. Parnell wants the fair catch at the 17. Three minutes, 42 seconds left in what has been a really good first half. Archbishop Hoban has one timeout to work with, and remember they'll get the football first to start the second half after they kicked off and then intercepted the second play of the day. Coming back here, taking another look at the Hoban offense. Here, here's another look at that third down play. If you see it right there crossing, there it is. You see it right there in the middle of your screen. 
Wilson Lamp, and it looked like Longwell was really looking for Wilson Lamp to get through those linebackers. That's what you look for on uh, crossing routes like this. Hoven, the Hoven Knights coming back out. Shane Ham so far, four for five, 72 yards through the air. Ham hands the football off, and the Massillon defense was ready. The big defensive lineman Emmanuel McElroy, all 5'11", 330 of him, swallows him up. <laughs> That's a lot of men. <laughs> That's a big young man, and you know, a place like Maslin, you, you look around, you, you coach other places, and you look, and you're like, where do they find these kids? I, you know, <laughs> what do they feed them? I, I don't see guys like that walking around every high school. Oh man, it's officially a gain of two. Second down and eight as the clock winds here toward three minutes. Of Shane Ham's composure. His fourth down touchdown scoring drive. Last week, maybe the biggest of his career. He throws one up here. It's juggled by Mealy. No flag. And both sides booing. I, I think it was a good no call. There, there was contact on both sides. The ball was just a little bit underthrown. Play action fake here from Ham. And he's going to put this ball up for Mealy. And, and look, Mealy's trying to fight for position. I can see why the Maslin fans are, are, are a little upset, but... Um, but, hey, good defensive play there. Boy, how about the game the Mayfield Wildcats gave Hoban last week? We could talk a little bit more about that when we have a stoppage. Hoban almost didn't quite qualify for the regional final. Ham on third and eight. Rips one to the far side of the field, and it's complete. Carry on, Davis. First down. That's a big time throw there. And, you know, Shane Ham, no official offers yet, but check out this throw. When you throw it from one hash 15 yards down the field out to the opposite sideline, when you hear NFL scouts or college recruiters talk about can that quarterback make all the throws, can he make the big-time throws, that's what they're looking at. The out cuts 15 yards from the opposite hash. 2.49 left before halftime. Perhaps the most anticipated high school football game in the state and maybe even larger tonight. Ham somehow gets out of that pocket. He runs out of bounds, a flag thrown in behind. You'll probably think it's in the area of a holding call. I think that somehow you referenced was in fact a holding call. I saw, I believe it was the big right tackle, Walter Gaines. tough. You saw it there on the replay. It's tough when your quarterback starts to escape the pocket. Your offensive tackle, you're setting up to block one way. Quarterback runs away that you're not thinking, and, and all of a sudden, the defensive end starts to pull you one way, and, and your hand is in, the, in, is in the wrong position. Walter Gaines, perhaps the biggest focal point on an offensive line this year that graduated Nolan Rumler, who is playing at the University of Michigan. Ham out to the right-hand side. He's being chased and tackled. It's pretty good pursuit over there by Isaiah Roberson. Ham able to pick up well, maybe just one. Looking all the way back out to the short side of the field, and it's a good attempt by Ham, but, but even better pursuit there by the Maslin defense. Going back to that offensive line, Coach Terrell talked, spoke very highly of both the tackles, Jake Burns and Walter Gaines. They're the old jokesters in the room. <laughs> you mentioned earlier the young guys in the interior of the line, the two guards in the center, but you got a couple old jokesters, some guys that really control the attitude. And for as many high-pressure games as these guys play in, it's good to have a little bit of that levity. Ham throws a screen pass. It is intercepted. What a play. Picked off by the defensive tackle, Corey Campbell, after Emmanuel McElroy slapped it to him. First interception of the year. These defensive linemen love getting their paws on the ball. Let's take a look here. 77 right in the middle of your screen. And, and, and all that was was a short little tunnel screen. Carrion Davis was trying to come inside, and, and he actually runs into his own offensive lineman. It just got that big paw. It was one defensive lineman almost passing it to another. Great play by the Tigers. Boy, if we had some 
Big game-changing plays here. Terrence Keyes bounces to the outside. And he has stopped at the 20-yard line for a gain of eight. Both these teams have been so good with the football. Turnover ratios were outstanding coming into this ball game. And, you know, just to see potentially a little bit of the nerves, a little bit of the environment, but also playing against the, playing against another really good team as well. And you're seeing a couple mistakes, and, and both teams capitalizing on the mistakes. Hey, it's no disrespect to the other six teams that are left in Division II. These might be the best two teams in the state of Ohio at Division II this year. And it just turns out they're now in the same region. Keys to the left-hand side. He picked up one. The first run only went to the 21. Keys picked up one yard there, stopped by Luke Bauer, who shed his block quickly. And now it's third down and two. Tigers have two timeouts. Knights have just one with a minute 25 here. What the Tigers are looking to do here is, is again, playing with tempo can mean a couple things, either playing fast or playing for control of the clock. They're going to try to bleed this thing down, see if they can score with as little time left as possible. Coach Terrell going to call a timeout here. So Archbishop Hoban burns their final. I remember the Knights will get the football to start the second half. So that takeaway by Maslin, that much more important there. We'll see if Tigers can cash it in for something. Your Archbishop Hoban here, this is a pretty important third down. Oh, really, really big. You know, you call third down, money down. These, these defenders all know it. They're, they're, they're talking to each other right now. It's money down. It's where you're in your living. It's, it's, you got to get off the field, turn it in. You know, at this point in the field, you, you're hoping maybe for three points, maybe creating a big play turnover. But absolutely huge down for Hoban to see if they can get off the field in a tough situation. Well, for what it's worth, head coach Nate Moore said, that his team feels pretty comfortable with kicker Alex Bauer once they get to the red zone. And they are right on the uh, right on the edge of the red zone here. Third down and two. This is Pfeiffer. Oh, he's got more than he needs by plenty. Needed two, and he picked up ten. First and goal, Tigers. That's his sixth carry of the game, over 30 yards now, and just an excellent bounce to the outside. Play was originally decided to go up the middle, and that quick juke step outside, quick play there for the Tigers. Pfeiffer gets his number called the second time. Zion Pfeiffer on the season entered today with just under 300 rushing yards. Terrence Keyes at 1,500 yards is certainly their feature back, but Pfeiffer has earned some carries, no doubt. This is Keys to the left. That's a good open field tackle by one of the leaders of the defense, senior linebacker Anthony Threadgill. And with the clock winding at 21 seconds, third down and goal. Remember, the Tigers have two timeouts, and they'll burn one here. Threadgill was, was a guy that Coach Terrell talked about as well. Um, he's, he's a senior and, you know, might not be highly recruited, but Coach Terrell just told the story. He was a guy that was on our scout team as a sophomore, worked his way into a little bit of playing time on that state championship team from a year ago, and, and now he's turned into a senior leader, an excellent player at the defensive end slash hybrid linebacker spot, coming up with an excellent play there. Infocision Stadium at the University of Akron, the site for our regional final tonight. Frankly, it's practically in Archbishop Hoban's backyard. If it were daylight from this high up in the press box, you, you might be able to see Archbishop Hoban from here. Obviously not quite as close, but still certainly close for the Massillon faithful. But uh, this is one of the premier venues in Northeast Ohio. And for a big crowd tonight, this is exactly what high school football playoff games are all about. These are the kinds of games you never forget. Yeah, it's, a, it's absolutely right. And just again, speaking about the crowd, the Maslin Perry, Maslin Washington game from last week, there was a little bit of trouble playing at Uniontown. Tickets sold out in four minutes. So to have it at a venue like this is pretty special. One timeout left. Longwell. Did he catch it? No. Incomplete. 
tried, Good effort. Tried that wham naked again there to Pfeiffer, the same, almost the same play that they scored on in, on their last scoring play. And Longwell just can't quite connect. Oh, excellent play actually there by Carrion Davis. He just ran right through the hands of Pfeiffer to break that up. Bauer's going to try a field goal. He'll put the ball down at the 15. So a 25-yard field goal try for the left-footed kicker. Ten seconds on the play clock here. Flag thrown. They might get a false start on the kicker here. I think he was expecting that snap to come back a little bit earlier. And he did a little stutter step, which if, if there's anybody on the defense watching, could initiate some kind of movement. Eagle eyes up here. You're right on it. All right, so they'll try it from five yards further back. 30-yard field goal to give the Tigers the lead. And it is good. Alex Bauer from 30 yards away. And the Tigers have a 17-14 lead with seven seconds left before halftime. Every possession, as you talked about earlier, every possession and points are really, really important. Rewind there a couple plays. Interception, great play by the Maslin defense, deep in Hoban territory. Turn it around, great stop by Hoban to make sure that it's only three. But in the same respect, it is three points for the lead for the Tigers. So every single drive, every defensive series in a game like this that's so tight, really critical. He hasn't had to kick a lot of field goals this year, now five of seven. His longest is 35 yards, but perhaps he's gotten some practice on the 74 extra points he's kicked. <laughs> Score a lot uh, of actually, touchdowns. Actually, check that, 76, because there were two more tonight. Yeah, this Maslin team is the real deal. And frankly, that worked out about as well as it could have for the Tigers, because they're going to kick things off here, and they will also kick off to start the second half. Hoban brings it from inside their own five. Cordell Cobb to the 25. And the clock stops with two seconds on it. But there is a flag down near the uh, hash marks at the 25. So Hoban will have 10 more yards they need to overcome here. Wouldn't be surprised if they just kneel it out, but you never know. Hoban has it from their own 15-yard line. Only down three. Really, you don't want to make a mistake here and cost yourself big time. So Shane Ham takes a knee. And the Knights and Tigers will go into their respective locker rooms in what is already a classic game, the Division II Region 5 Final. Doug, your favorite part of the first half? Just seeing the, ener seeing the energy and seeing the mistakes. That lets you know that these guys care, and, the, and the, moment, the moment is here ready for these guys. So to see the mistakes and to see some of those same guys that make those mistakes come back and make some big plays. You've seen a couple interceptions from the quarterbacks, seen a couple of great long throws and great plays. We're seeing a couple offensive and defensive lines really going at each other. These teams have traded points blow for blow back and forth, and it's the Tigers that have a three-point advantage as they try to knock off the four-time defending Division II state champions. Halftime in Akron. We'll have the second half for you here in just a little while. Nassel in 17, Archbishop Hoban 14 on Spectrum News 1.
Tonight, the Tigers Swing Band would like to present more of our favorite songs from this past season. Let's start off with the Aretha Franklin classic, Pink.
Wilson edition of the Nesslin Tiger Swing Band.
Tigers 17, Archbishop Hoban Knights 14 in a rematch of last year's Division II state championship game. Great first half. Both teams had some explosive plays. Both teams turned it over twice, Doug. Pretty uh, impressive to see the way they fought through some early adversity. Yeah, taking a look at a couple of these highlights from the first half. There's Wilson Lamp with the long touchdown from Aiden Longwell. And then on the next offensive series for Maslin, the big interception by Carrion Davis returned. And this sets up the long touchdown by Braden Fox from Shane Ham. So yeah, just meshing the turnovers with scoring points off turnovers. Maslin turned in an interception right there at the end of the first half into three points. And the long, uh, the long interception return turned into seven from Hoban. So it's balancing those turnovers and like you said, the explosive plays that we expected coming into this one. Archbishop Hoban kicked off to start the game and two plays later had a huge interception. They weren't able to turn it into points. They picked off Longwell twice after he only thrown five picks the first 12 games. This has the makings of an instant classic. And we're ready to kick things off. That one goes through the back of the end zone for a touchback. All right, Hoban's offense coming back out. What's the biggest adjustment they need to make? You know, I, they got to keep running the football. They had some success in the first half. They found some things in the second quarter there. They, they only finished with 57 rushes, but Shane Ham has been good on the quarterback runs. So I expect to see a little bit of more, a little bit more of that. We're going to see some more speed option, maybe starting to throw in some gap schemes and, and G schemes. But I do want to see them come back to Braden Fox on a couple of big time pass plays. Well, Braden Fox's first uh, throw his direction, he caught for a 40 yard score. All right, ready to rock. Shane Ham goes under center. Second half on the way here. Turns around and hands the big man, Diamante Trainum. Rumbles his way forward for a short gain. Tackled by Katie Fuller, among Trainum. others. Picked up two, second out and eight. Maslin defense played really well in the first half as well. Um, you know, that defensive front, they've been good all year. I mentioned it earlier in the first half of the broadcast. Take a look at them here. They actually go to a three-man front there, so a little bit of a change. Maybe something a little bit different for them. They line up here, they go back to an even front. Archbishop Hoban only ran 24 plays for 147 yards in that first half. Offense somewhat held in check. Trainum gets a lead block to the outside. Might be just shy of the 30. I'm not sure exactly where he stepped out. It's going to be close. But I think he's going to be short of the first down. Ran out of bounds there by the Tigers number three. Preston Hodges came into the game with 49 tackles on the season. He is going to be marked just short there. So a big third down in the first half. Hoban on third down was two of four. Archbishop Hoban checking in Daryl Peterson. Who plays mostly as an outside linebacker. He's on the field here, I would imagine, to try and add a little blocking for the Knights. Train him, got the yard he needed. In fact, he picked up two, an easy first down. I mentioned it earlier in the game, both these running attacks are a little bit more old school than they are new school. Take a look at this, you see more of an ISO look, you had a wing back motion across and send the fullback up through the hole, and then you got a big body, a big strong body back there like train him, and he's really going to fall forward for that, for that yard at the very least. Which team do you think did a better job in the trenches, both sides of the ball, that first half? Give the edge to Maslin, just looking at the stats alone, a little more running yardage and, and, and stopping Hoban a little bit more, I think, than Hoban has been used to. Well, Maslin just called a timeout. Timeout. Maslin, the first charge. Must not have liked some look they saw there. So the Tigers have a 17-14 lead, 10 minutes, 39 seconds left in the third quarter. By the way, we are uh, still awaiting the official attendance number, but I wouldn't be surprised if it is pushing 15,000 tonight. This, uh, this stadium seats 25,000, and I think you could make a pretty good argument that it is roughly two-thirds full 
no matter what the number is, what a great support from both the uh, Massillon faithful and uh, certainly Archbishop Hoban here locally too. Coach Moore, Coach Moore talked when, when we spoke earlier this week. He talked about the tradition, and, and we mentioned it earlier in the first half. But to understand that everybody in the community comes out, but not just that, the young men out on the field, they are the sons and the grandsons and the nephews of Tigers of previous generations. So you know at the very least, those guys are out in the crowds with, with their family. So it, it's really impressive to see. Trainum shifts from left to right. Shane Ham runs away from trouble and dumps it off. Sean Parnell up close to the 40. Two yards shy of a first down, so call it second and two. Hoban likes the play action. You get a little bit here off of the jet motion. Great edge pressure coming from Maslin there. And a nice job sliding out of the backfield off of that jet motion to make a positive play and shorten the sticks here on second down. Well, the other thing I really like about this Archbishop Holman team is they are pretty good at changing up what they want to do offensively at halftime. They make a lot of really good adjustments. We're a little more smash mouth in the first half. Wow, good play by Trainum just to haul that in feels like a minor miracle that he only lost one yard. Talk about the adjustments that Hoban makes at halftime. Check out this adjustment. We saw speed option from Hoban a little bit in the first half. Here's speed option for the second time. And number 15 for the Tigers there comes down Luke Murphy, a Kent State commit, comes down from the safety position and makes an excellent play playing the running back after somebody had already been assigned to the quarterback. So a great adjustment there on Maslin's part to, to adjust to something that they saw coming out from Hoban. Trainum comes off the field on third and three. Four seconds to get this playoff for Shane Ham. Screen pass to the right side. Dawson lost the football. It is ruled a fumble. But I'm not sure you can fumble it forward out of bounds for a first down. <laughs> I think they're going to have to put that back unless they're going to overrule it. The referees now are, looks like they're going to call it an incompletion. Tried to slip. Take a look at it here on the replay. Very, very close. It did look like he started to tuck it, but no matter what there, Preston Hodges from the Sam linebacker position come up. That's a, that's a football player making an open field tackle. An excellent play there by Hodges. Braden Fox back to punt. Robbie Page will receive the kick. Opening drive of the third quarter. Stalls after just a brief one first down for Archbishop Hoban. Fox kicking into the wind there. Kind of checks up on him at the 30. Really nice adjustments there, I think, overall by the Tigers at defense at halftime. Hoven did a little something in the first half. They were trying to get wide, whether it was on the speed option or throwing those swing passes. And you saw there in that first series that Maslin came out with a game plan. They had Hodges and they had Luke Murphy rolling up from the safety position to make some plays and stops. Great adjustment by the coaching staff from Maslin. If you're just tuning in, we are so glad to have you with us here tonight from the University of Akron. From Brendan Gulick alongside former John Carroll quarterback Doug Phillips. A rematch of the Division II state championship from a year ago. Flag thrown back at the line of scrimmage. Just might negate this big run by Pfeiffer. He goes all the way across midfield. I just every time he touches the ball, I'm so impressed with Pfeiffer, knowing he's not that star back. This is coming back here. It's going to be a holding play. Might have gotten the center from Massel in there. Holding on the offense. Number 65. 10 yards. First down. It was actually the left guard, John Kuth, one of those young juniors for the Tigers. The gate's an excellent run by Pfeiffer. The, you know, the other thing that Archbishop Hoban has done a good job of tonight is avoid giving up that big play on the ground. Longest run of the day is 23 yards since that one has been negated. 
Terrence Keys has it. This time it's Pfeiffer to the right-hand side. Pfeiffer's longest run and gone for 13. That time he is probably pretty close to that. Looks like they'll give him 10. Second and 10. Little G scheme there from the Tigers. Pulled that backside guard, trying to give Pfeiffer a lane up the seam of the of the Hoban defense. Picks up 10, gets it back down to a second and manageable. Trying to give yourself a nice third and short potentially here after this one. Aiden Longwell is as well liked as anybody you're going to find, not just in Stark County, but in Northeast Ohio. It's a gain up to about the 33, and we've got Terrence players on, on both sides that are down. Uh oh. Terrence Keys for Maslin is laying on his left side, and he is in some clear agony. Injured Knight is Daryl Peterson. Mm. Those are two really good players. Hope they're both okay. Going back to Longwell, you know, head coaches love talking about their quarterbacks. And it was interesting that Coach Moore talked a little bit more about the off the field life of, of Longwell. And he's a, a very likable young man. You know, made, made the reference, hey, if you're going to have a, a, a young man date your daughter, marry your daughter, this is the kind of kid. And, and, that, and that says a lot. Again, with everything that goes on in this football program and, and how much success that you've had at, at different levels, um, it speaks a lot to the character of, of Aiden Longwell that, you know, he, he can spend time with people not just in his football circle but, but around the school community. I think before he made that comment about uh, dating your daughter, he, he said, close your eyes and imagine just the best kid you've ever met. That's Aiden Longwell. All right, well, that's pretty high praise. <laughs> Glad to see that Aiden Longwell has got the respect of his teammates, but also of uh, the coaching staff as well. Better news in the meantime to see Peterson get back to his feet. Keyes is also walking off under his own, own power, but he uh, looks like he's banged up a little bit, where Peterson might not have had the worst of that. I don't want to speculate at the nature of an injury, but certainly hope those two players can find their way back on the field because they've been big impact players for both sides. Third down and four for the Tigers, and now it's really up to Pfeiffer to try to carry the load here offensively. How about the fact we haven't seen one completed pass to Jaden Ballard all night long? I want to see him get involved. I want to see him get involved. He's going to be an Ohio State Buckeye for a reason. Let's see if we can get him involved here at some point in the third quarter. Pfeiffer needed the 37, and he didn't even get close. Maslin goes three and out. Take a look here at the Hoban front. That's a freshman there, number 52. He makes a nice play. He doesn't make the tackle, but what he does is he disrupts enough. That was number 52, Jason Marty disrupts enough for big number 71, Drew Hazenden, to come back and make that tackle for the Knights. Magnus Haynes will punt it away to Sean Parnell. Fourth down and two for the Tigers. Haynes, end over end kick, lands at the 27 and is killed at the 22. All right, so both offenses that had some explosive first half plays come out and have a little bit of trouble moving the football here in the beginning of the third quarter. Maybe some of that adrenaline wore off. It, it did, and, and now we really begin the chess match between the coaches. What, what do we want to do? How, how can we make sure that we're doing what we've done and been successful with all year? But those big plays that we talked about early, we saw those go away in the second quarter. Both teams have settled in gotten some comfort with their run games, but I would expect very soon here for somebody to take a shot, take it, take an opportunity to break this thing open. First play of the drive for the Archbishop Hoban Knights who are in white tonight. That's Diamante train him out to the left-hand side, and he did step out of bounds. Diamante and Trainum on the carry, ran out of bounds by Luke Murphy. Continuing to have some success in, in bouncing this outside of the defensive front of Maslin. Nice job by the offensive line sealing on that left side and allowing Trainum to bounce that thing and, and get right about 10. It's going to be a yard short there of the first down. 
Latest update from Avon, Avon Lake. 3-3 at halftime in a rematch of their week one early season rivalry game. Winner of that game plays the winner of this contest. On second and one, the QB sneak for hand. Good to move the sticks. So a fresh set of downs for a team that looks a whole lot like the Akron Zips, don't they? The color scheme and all. Color scheme, like they, yeah. Uh, they fit in. That navy, the navy blue, the Vegas gold. It's almost like they're right at home here. I have a feeling that head coach uh, Tom Arth of the Akron Zips might not mind having a few of the Zips, or I should say a few of the Knights somewhere along the way. So the same thing about the Tigers. These are two supremely talented high school teams. Diamante Trainum has taken a much bigger role here early in this third quarter, but he has yet to really bust one open. A gain of two there. Second down at eight. Murray on the stop. He is. You know, he, he's a big play. He is a big playback. You see him there, and Maslin in front is up, is up there making nice plays. He, he's a big play back. He averages 8.9 carries, 8.9 yards per carry on the year. So he's a bigger play back. He, he breaks some long runs, but credit to the Maslin defense. You're keeping him contained and, and just trying to grind, grind their way through this quarter. Inside five and a half minutes to go in the third, second and nine. Train him to the left, and he got hit quickly. Caden Wollard off the right side of the line. The first to get him, no game. This is an excellent play. That'll be about his 16th tackle for a loss uh, this season. Plays that outside linebacker rush end position. Come right off that edge and, and takes down the running back for a loss. Excellent job. It's what he's been doing all year with those kind of statistics. Third offensive drive of the third quarter. We have one total first down. I beg your pardon, two first downs because of the QB sneak they had a couple plays ago. Third and nine, Ham. Well, he got away from being sacked, but couldn't avoid Woolard in the end. A gain of two, but it is fourth down and seven. And the Knights bring on the special teams unit. Looked like they were trying to run four verticals. The Tigers defensive backfield did a really nice job running. And that, that pretty much is a, is a coverage. It's not quite a sack because he got up past the line of scrimmage, but a nice play in coverage results in a fourth down. Preston Hodges, TJ Williams back deep to return. Braden Fox's punt. Sends it away with fewer than four minutes left in the third. That's not a great punt, but not terrible. And Maslin will have field position at the 32. Kind of get the feeling Fox didn't strike that one quite as well as he was able to. You know, all these, you know, in today's high school game, you get these athletes who are punting, try to you try to spread the the defense out a little bit. And I'm sure Braden's a, an athletic enough kid that if need be, he might be able to throw a pass. They might be able to run a fake. That's why he's back there. He wasn't born and bred a punter. Um, but the change of field position is enough here. First and 10 for the Tigers. Zion Pfeiffer. Right over the middle. He fumbled the ball, but after he was tackled. And put him down at the 34 for a gain of two. Second down and eight. We are really going to see, as Terrence Keyes was injured on that last series, we're really going to start to see a lot more of Zion Pfeiffer just, you know, giving you a snapshot of what his season has been like. 66 carries coming into this one for just under 300 yards and eight touchdowns. But he's going to be he's going to be featured here in the rest of this game. Longwell throwing near side and it's dropped. Andrew Wilson Lamp started to think about turning forward but forgot the football. Third down. Difficult throw out there to the wide side. Longwell delivered it well. It was a good opportunity to get a playmaker in space. Just couldn't quite connect. Third down and eight. Maslin needs the 42. Hard count from Longwell, not a surprise. Only five in the box defensively for the Knights here. See what kind of pressure they can generate. 
four seconds to snap it. Longwell flushed out of the pocket. Trying to make something happen with his feet. Flagged down near the line of scrimmage. And the pass is thrown well out of bounds. Great job by the Hovind defensive front there. We're going to wait to see what this penalty is going to be. It brings a fourth down and eight. It is going to be a hold. They tried to go to Jaden Ballard on the wide side there. Hovind on the offense. Number 65. The Phillies have declined. Fourth down. But it was the junior, number 17, Daryl Peterson, defensive lineman from Hovind, that got right up into Aiden Longwell's face to force him to have to roll and essentially create that penalty. It's been a defensive second half. Both teams are certainly capable of playing good defense. But a drastic change from what we saw early on. Well, it's kind of a gutsy decision by Archbishop Hoban. He sacrificed his body for some field position. Parnell able to at least put two hands on the football and protect it. So it'll be from the 22-yard line, first and 10 Knights. We'll take a look and start to see what field position is doing, right? It, and sometimes as, as quarterbacks, and these guys have played in enough big games that they know sometimes it, it is okay to punt the football. Let's not throw a ball up for grabs. Let's not turn the ball over field positions with the way that these defenses are playing, it's going to be really important. Don't turn the ball over in a, in a, in a bad area of the field. Third offensive drive in this third quarter for Archbishop Hoban. Four-time defending state champs. They have lost just four of their last 65 games. Over the middle of the field, it is bobbled and dropped. Incomplete. Carry on Davis just couldn't complete the catch. That was another offensive play that has been set up by the first two drives. Play action fake there to train them and taking a shot down the field, but just excellent coverage. Gets that hand right where that ball is coming in. Excellent job by Isaiah Roberson. Second down and 10. Tigers still nursing that three-point lead thanks to a field goal with seven seconds left before halftime. Too short for Braden Fox, and it's third and ten. Tried to isolate Fox there, but there were three Tigers over in the area. Big third down here again, still trying to manage this field position, and the Tigers fans are coming alive over on the far side of Infocision Stadium. Fox, Mealy, and Ernest Witcher the third, all in the game. They're split out wide to the right. Ham looking, Ham has Fox, but four yards short of the line to gain. Well, it brings up fourth and four, and Archbishop Hoban again will Punt it away. Just a little spacing route by that by those trips receivers on the right side. Short pass sometimes. Again, like I said at the end of that last series, sometimes you got to take that short pass even though it doesn't get you all the way to the sticks. Well, some of the fireworks have been taken out of the stadium here. You kind of feel a, a drop in energy. Fox hits this one off the side of his foot. It takes a pretty favorable bounce. This entire third quarter has been played between the 25-yard lines. And with 1.57 left on the third quarter clock, the Tigers get the football back, lead by three. Meanwhile, since Terrence Keyes got hurt, we still haven't seen him on the field. Trying to find him over on the sideline, but at the moment, having trouble locating. I don't know if he might be back in the locker room. He is back in the backfield. Is he? All right. Terrence Keyes Jr. takes the football and rumbles ahead for four yards. That's why I couldn't find him on the sideline. 
comes back. He, he's got 11 carries for 40 yards. That's his 12th carry of the football game. Again, expecting Maslin here to, to, you know, at some point here, let's let's make use of these wide receivers that you got out there. Excuse me, that's 14 carries for 76 for Terrence Keys. 123 and counting on the third quarter timer. This is Zion Pfeiffer. They're trying to run behind the right guard, Dylan Gerritsen. Picked up, looks like two yards, third and four. Saw Jaden Ballard over on the, towards the Maslin sideline. Looked like that play could have been a, an RPO run pass option. He ran a short little hitch route up by himself. So again, I'm just expecting at any point here for Aiden Longwell to start thinking about what's going on on the outsides and take a shot. Longwell guns it over the middle and it's defended beautifully. Very well done by Alvin Stallworth. Fourth down. Both these teams using the play action because of how much they've been running the ball. So you take a look at this here and, and just the pressure. The pressure ultimately gets the long well. Wilson Lamp was in the area, but a nice play on, on in the defensive backfield by the Hoban Knights. Sean Parnell back to receive yet another punt. This is the sixth punt of the third quarter. Wow, what a great kick. Parnell dropped it. I think he got it back. He did the right thing there, tried to make a fair catch. The referee right on the ball is pointing Hoban's way, but they're going to continue to sort it out. He tries to make the fair catch, but it was such a good kick. He was moving backwards. Those are the toughest punts to field. But he did a nice job falling on that one and not trying to do too much with it. So Archbishop Hoban dodges a major bullet. They've got it from their own nine yard line. 32 seconds left third quarter. The Knights have scored on uh, one passing play to Braden Fox and a rushing play from Victor Dawson. Maslin's touchdowns have come on a 53-yard bomb to Andrew Wilson-Lamp and a nine-yard pass to Zion Pfeiffer, along with a 31-yard Alex Bauer field goal. Deep in their own end, first and 10. Diamante Trainum got upended by Benjamin Creekbaum. Creekbaum, a, a good linebacker. Doug, somebody that has really risen this year, a senior, a captain on the defense, but a guy that Tigers rally behind. Coach called, coach called him out and said it's just been an incredible year for him, a lot of growth, and right there, he just comes off, he was flowing all the way to the right, and he just came back and almost cut back right along with Trainum. And to tackle a guy like that one-on-one -on -one right in the hole shows you something about how, how Kirchbaum, how he's thinking about this ball game. The Archbishop Hoban Knights have won 22 consecutive playoff games. But after a scoreless third quarter, the Knights trail Maslin 17-14. Got a good look there at those who have chosen to make the trip to InfoCision Stadium tonight. They have certainly been loud in that first half and trying to get behind the defenses. Get a look at some of the highlights here so far tonight, including a lot of defensive stops here this third period. Good pressure there by the Maslin Tigers defense. Something that they've been doing all year and an excellent play here in the defensive backfield by Roberson to break up that long play action pass. Take a look here at the Hoban defense on the other side, bottling up the running attack and getting pressure against Aiden Longwell. All around, third quarter defined by that defense, which, hey, that's a sign of a championship team as well. Being able to put your foot down, see what the offenses are doing and make those adjustments. I don't think it's hyperbole to say that if Maslin can beat Archbishop Hoban today, it just might be the biggest win 
in the history of their program, at and least Monday since they the stopped crowning Blue state Blue championships Blue. without playing in a playoff format. Yeah, this, this throughout this format, as you take a look at this replay and train them trying to bounce it outside again. Maslin doing an excellent job of pursuing from sideline to sideline. But yeah, since they since they made this change to the computer point system and, and having eight teams in the region, 32 teams across the state, um, yeah, this would be huge for them to get back and, and put themselves in a situation. Third and one to start, or I should say the second play of the quarter. They needed the 19, and they signal first down. Numbers for you so far in the game. Archbishop Hoban, as you see Shane Ham picking it up there. Hoban has run 41 plays now for 192 yards. Maslin, 38 plays for 203 yards. Time of possession is almost dead even. I'll tell you the one thing that really stands out to me though, Maslin is just one for six on third downs tonight. Hoban's been better through the air. Maslin better on the ground. Ham looking over the middle, throws in a tight window, and Braden Fox grabs the slant pass for 10. Nice job spreading out the Maslin defense. They set the tail back out into the flat, gave just enough window for that Sam linebacker to be influenced. You see the tailback heading out towards Ham's right, opens up the window for Braden Fox. Let's talk about Shane Ham for a second. Last week, the two minute drill under control, the team was able to to kind of bring it all in after maybe it didn't go so well in week three against St. Ignatius. And he throws on a fourth down with their season on the line, throws a touchdown to beat Mayfield in the regional semifinals. This one is caught near side. Well, the ball came out, but the referee had already blown the whistle to stop play. So the catch completed there from Jared Mealy. And perhaps that's a turning point for Shane Ham. I know, look, you've won a couple state titles, Doug, but there hasn't been a lot of adversity for Hope in the last couple years. And the way these teams have been built, it has, it has surely been built around the running game. So for a young guy like Shane Ham, he makes his first start as, as a freshman at Hoban, and, and you're rolling. But to take a game into your own hands, two-minute drill, things that you've been working on since August, gives you that kind of confidence. Second down and five this year, well, it's been a different story. A lot of adversity, a lot of injuries, a lot of tough things that some of these kids have had to go through. Diamante Trainum lost a yard, third down and six coming here, and some of those were off the field related, but it's brought guys closer together and it's influenced guys like Shane Ham trying to become better leaders. I, I asked Coach Terrell, you know, Coach, how, how do you how do you look at, at each individual year and, and what makes this team special? And he said, just what you did, what you just said, overcoming adversity. And, and so much off the field gives you the ability to have some success on it. Third and six, Ham throws for the first down on the far side. Oh, it was dropped. Oh my goodness, Parnell had it and he couldn't hang on. He had to jump just a little bit right at the very end. And I think that was Wilson Lamp over there making a play. He's not a, in at corner too much. Throw to the wide side of the field and, oh, he, Wilson Lamp just gets his arm right where the ball goes. And as the receiver came down with the football, just happened to knock it out. Critical play there by Wilson Lamp. It was a good throw, but Wilson Lamp, who has a touchdown reception, might have just made his most impactful play of the night. Braden Fox with a great punt. This is Robbie Page, and he's tackled at the 23-yard line. So this third and now fourth quarter has been dominated by field position. Every possession in the second half has ended in a punt. Tigers 17, Knights 14. And, and, it, and what it does is it, it changes how coaches think about their playbook. If you're up towards the 40-yard line, if you're in plus territory across the 50, maybe you're willing to take some shots down the field. But backed up inside your own 30, you want to do what you do best. You want to put it on the ground. You want to trust your offensive linemen and, and your stud tailbacks. And you can really say that about both teams. So starting inside the 30 will really do that to you. 8.41 left regulation. 
What a pocket for Longwell. He wants it all down the middle, and it's a great defensive play. Batted away by Cordell Cobb. That's twice today he's done that. And there on, on the receiving end of that was Wilson Lamp. So early on in the game, early on in the game, he makes a big play. Take a look here at, at the replay. Longwell, deep drop, sets himself up, and it's really just one-on-one. -on -one. Unbelievable play. Great position coming in with that inside arm swatting. Perfect timing as that ball comes in. Great defensive play. Longwell, 55 yards through the air, and they get nothing for it. And the second and ten uh, play goes for two, setting up third down and eight. Terrence Keyes Jr. has been bottled up for the most part tonight. They haven't really let the guy get into open space where he can turn on the afterburners. Ben, ben don't break. Coach right. Terrell, Coach Terrell said it. There's such a big play offense that if you can contain him and keep him inside regular down and distance, they're doing their job. Listen to this crowd. Longwell again, big throw far side, and Cobb breaks up another one. Wilson Lamp, the intended target. Cordell Cobb is having a terrific night. For a guy that doesn't play wide receiver, look, the, the, the guy's an athlete, but he's running the routes with a Division I receiver. Look at that, accelerates back out of his break. It looked like Wilson Lamp had actually turned him around a little bit. Good throw by Aiden Longwell, and it's just an even better defensive play. You might be willing to say, well, the second half hasn't been very good because nobody's scored. Well, it's been a great second half because we've seen some excellent defensive plays. Maslin clinging to a three-point lead here. They'll let this one fall. And they'll kill it at the 30. Talk a little bit more about Maslin and, and their season. Yes, they're 12 and 0. Um, we, we asked Coach Moore a little bit about, what, you know, when when did this team start to take shape? And and he made the comment that it started in January. It started in January, February, building a, a team teamwork in the weight room, and they're one, if you can call it, even a hiccup throughout the course of the season. 12 and 0, hard to say. They've been blowing teams out. But what was a challenging moment of this season? And he brought up a midseason game against Barberton where just some unforced errors that seemed to galvanize the Tigers. That was in week eight. On first down, perhaps one of the best offensive plays in a while, and it ends up turning into a fumble. Wow! Victor Dawson thought he was down, and he coughs it up. Maslin with the biggest takeaway of the night. It was a great initial effort. And Vic Dawson just tried to stretch a little bit further to get close to that first down. Let's take a look. Down blocking scheme. Both guards pull. Excellent run. And as he goes to stretch this ball right at the end, right there, right? He, was just, he just kept those legs driving. Great team tackling by the Tigers. When you have that many black hats around the ball, good things are going to happen for your defense. Maslin handing it to Zion Pfeiffer, who's tackled just shy of the 37-yard line. Well, starting to think about the clock here. 7.20 and counting in the fourth quarter. Maslin hasn't really moved the football at all in the second half. And I would think here that considering they have the lead, you can't take your foot off the gas, but you want to keep that time moving. Longwell throws a quick hitch. Wilson Lamp has it for a first down. Uh, wait a sec. Wow, that's a tough spot. They're giving him a full yard shy of the sticks. There's a quick out route as you take a look. Soft coverage over there by the corner. Interesting spot there by the officiating crew. So it'll bring up a, a third and one. Could come back to be a big spot, big decision. Good throw and catch by the Tigers. Clock stops with exactly seven minutes. Pfeiffer in a tailback here. They give it to him. I don't know if he got it. It's going to be awfully close, but Walter Gaines, all 6'5", 340 of him, 
Stopped him like a brick wall and then threw him backwards. It's fourth down. Big, big series here in this game, in this playoff run. Field position finally flipped. The momentum started to turn and now fourth and one. Gonna get a timeout here from Hoban to make sure everything is lined up correctly. Well, the fans were getting on their feet. Now they're gonna have to bite their nails here for a moment. Let's uh, remind you how Maslin got to this point. The Tigers have had a, a perfect season so far, 12 and 0. Their playoff wins have come against Warren Harding, 55 nothing, and last week against Perry, 35 to 7. But of course, that Week 10 win against Canton McKinley, who was knocked out of the playoffs by Metter last week. Kent McKinley was very good this year. And they beat Kent McKinley 24-14. For the most part, look, you're trying to win state championships. But if you're a Maslin fan and if you beat Kent McKinley, eh, you don't win it all, it's okay still. You know, that mantra is always 1-0. Hey, we're going 1-0. <laughs> it's the next week. It's the next week. But you know, in that building down in, in Maslin, they talk about McKinley a little bit throughout the year. Biggest play of the night, fourth down and one. Pfeiffer did not get it. What an open field tackle by Luke Bauer. Unbelievable stop there from Hoban. Energy sucked out of the Maslin side of the stadium and just all the credit in the world to the Hoban defense. One-on-one -on -one players coming in there, making a play at a huge crucial moment of this football game. Not only does Hoban <laughs> not allow Maslin to get more than a yard on back-to-back, -back, third and fourth down and one, but the fumble does not cost them points. Hoban takes over first and 10 from the 34, still down three with plenty of time. Ham has a great pocket. Running down to the left side and he's able to pick up two. Forced out of bounds by Preston Hodges. Great coverage over there on the far side of the field. That's where Ham was looking uh, the entire time. They bracketed the two receivers very nicely. Safety Sam linebacker and corner over there and forced Ham to hold on to it longer than he wanted to. Yeah, that's my mistake. No gain on the play. Stepped out at the 34, so it's still second down to 10 here with 6.20 on the clock. Parnell and Fox split out to the right. Wide to the left, Jared Mealy. This is Trainum rumbling over the 40-yard line. I think he stepped out right at the 40. So a manageable third down and four. Another man blocking scheme there from Hoban. And Trainum really likes bouncing this thing outside tonight, trying to take advantage of some of the space out by the numbers. Third and four. Wow. Terrific play. Jared Mealy makes the catch. Great timing. Needed four, picked up five, first down. Mealy came into this game about the third or fourth wide receiver just in terms of catches and touches and yards. He's come up with three pretty big ones today. Excellent ball placement there from Shane Ham outside. Nobody else was getting to that one. And just an even better catch there from Mealy. Aiden Longwell threw two picks in the first half. Shane Ham threw an interception in the first half. Archbishop Hoban has lost two fumbles and they have fumbled one additional time that they were able to jump back on top of. That's a delay of game. Oh, they didn't throw the flag. Shane Ham driven down in the backfield. It would have been better to take the delay of game. It's a loss of seven. Just weren't ready to, weren't quite ready to go. They Ham ran into the huddle with about 10 seconds left. Take a look at the Maslin in front here. Getting pressure from all directions. Excellent outside blitz there. Number 11, Seth Lance was one of the first ones to come and force Ham to start looking around. And it was Lance who actually brought him down. Tiger Faithful can feel it. 
They are perhaps five minutes away from, if not the biggest, certainly one of the biggest wins in the long tradition rich history of Massel and Tiger football. Ham steps out of two tackles and fires a completion to Jared Mealy. On second and 17, they pick up 16, third and one. Isaiah Robertson on the stop, but Mealy's a little slow to get up. And the officials call for a timeout because of the injury. Great mobility there by Ham. Had a blitzer come into his face right away. Good sign as Mealy jogs back towards the sideline. Looked like he just got bumped on his leg a little bit there. Great job by Ham getting away from pressure, keeping his eyes downfield. Sign of a good, experienced quarterback who's comfortable with what everything is happening on the field that you can run around in the backfield and, and, and keep your eyes down there to make a bigger play. Is this four down territory? 444 left, I believe it is. All right. I believe it is. We'll see if it even comes to it. Third down and one. Diamante train him to the right hand side. He's got the first down and more. Eventually tackled by Preston Hodges, but the big fella rumbles down to the 37. First time that Hoban has been across midfield here in this in this second half. Take a look at Trainum, take a look at that offensive line, young offensive interior line, creating a lot of seams there. Trainum powering through some of those tackles from Massel. 22 consecutive playoff victories. That's more than two full seasons in a row in the postseason. It's a lot of extra practices and a lot of additional experience. Diamante Trainum busts one, and he's tackled at the 23-yard line. The Knights are on the move. He, he's such a big, powerful back that it reminds me of some of those running backs who wear you down throughout the course of the game. Take a look. Again, another G scheme here from Hoban. And, and he bounces, he bounces back to that weak side. Look at the vision here, right here. Right there and just finds himself in open space. Experience, experience in just that, that ability to wear you down as the game goes on. Train him again. Shakes a tackler at the 20 and he's down to the numbers near the 10. They'll put him on the 12-yard line, but there are two flags on the field. And it looks like it's coming back. Hoban has definitely found something that they like. Both of those last two plays, they have been pulling. Number 51, Luke Pettit, that center. Jake Burns, who got called. We'll take a look here. Take a look at Pettit, the center. He's actually going to pull here as he's uncovered. Well, it sets up first down, and uh, I think it's first and 19 from the spot of that foul. Kind of awkward. Shane Ham near side. And it's a completion. Now, you want to start thinking here, too. You're only down three. You only need a field goal. And while you've got some things moving in the right direction here, you don't want to take yourself out of potentially game time field goal range. Continue to operate your offense, right? Continue to operate your offense. Offense. You've been running the ball well on this series. Get your chunks back. Get yourself back into field goal range. And ultimately here, at this point in the game, we are starting to think about time a little bit more. We're getting a timeout here from the Hoban sideline. But you're thinking about time. You're thinking about running the football. And if you can kick a field goal and tie it with very little time left, that's almost a victory. That, that's, that's a partial victory as well. Send this thing to overtime. What a great football game. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage. Appreciate everybody's work. Here from Spectrum News 1 bringing it to you live. An additional game. We had three televised uh, games across the state of Ohio each week throughout the playoffs, but this matchup dictated uh, a fourth on TV, and we are certainly uh, enjoying it here in person. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you might be watching. 3.05 left in the fourth quarter. Hoban just took their second timeout. 
Tigers have two remaining. Can't believe that we haven't seen a single score the entire second half, and it's been good, clean football both sides. Officially second down and 15. Oh, shovel pass goes back inside to carry on Davis. Davis shakes free, still on his feet. Finally, gang tackle. I think his forward progress took him to the 19-yard line. Important there as he finished that run to fall forward again. We were talking about it before. See the jet motion fake here. Get the defense all flowing towards the defensive right and flip that right underneath on the shovel pass to Davis. Nice play design there by the Knights. Going to reset the clock here. And now it's running. 232 and counting. Third down and six from the 19. Very interested to see what Hoban does here. Really got to be smart here all around. No negative plays. This has got to be positive. You got to hold your water here and make sure that you stay inside a field goal range. Trainum's the tailback. That's Parnell. They throw left side. It is incomplete. Looking for Braden Fox, and it brings up a fourth down. Archbishop Hoban now has to bring on the special teams unit. Haven't kicked many field goals this year. They've had one blocked, missed two additional field goals, and made two from 25 and from 34. You know what? They're going to keep the offense on the field. Wow. Fourth down and six. Archbishop Hoban wants nothing to do with playing for a tie. Ham. Down he goes. Preston Hodges on the tackle. And with 2.05 left in regulation, Archbishop Hoban only has one timeout. Is it enough for the Tigers? What a stop by the Tigers. You know, this whole second half, they've been so active. Look at all the pressure. It's just too many guys for the Hoban offensive line to account for. The pressure has been great all this second half. Excellent job coming out after halftime by the Tigers. This defense has been fired up the entire half. Officials timeout on the field. Last year, Maslin lost 42-28 in the state championship game. This game has been played with a pretty tight margin the whole way. No team is led by more than seven points. The Tigers lead by three. If they get a first down, it's over. If they don't get a first down, we'll have to do some quick math to figure it out, but Hoban could get the ball back with less than a minute to go. Zion Pfeiffer up the middle. He is short of the line to gain. Second down coming from the 29. And the orange and black faithful are about to lose their minds. Again, I don't think it's hyperbole. This just might be the biggest win in the history of Massillon football. And it and it comes as a result, you know, of, of, of this time and this place and and some math and recalculations and, and getting Maslin up into this region five. It's it's early in the playoffs, right? This is this is a state quarterfinal. Pfeiffer again tackled at the 30, and now Tim Tyrell calls timeout with 112 on the clock. Uh, they run it down to 111. With that realignment, both That realignment, Hoban moving up for competitive balance reasons a couple years ago, and then this past off season, just because of both competitive balance. For reasons of both competitive balance and, and simple geography, 
Um, and that's what that's what brought these two schools together tonight. So so to have such an important game in the history of Maslin football played even this early. There's still two weeks to go, but again, it's all about being one and zero and surviving with an opportunity to play the next week. They've won 24 state championships, but none since 1970. Maslin knows the black eye that has been associated with their program for never having won it on the field. And they are out to prove that this year's team can get it done. They might be two yards away from getting one game closer. Clock has one minute and 14 seconds. I think Nate Moore may have called timeout. He, they did not have the right personnel on the field. They were waiting for somebody else to run out. Couldn't quite get him out there in time. That's Coach Moore speaking with the far side official. So Maslin has to burn one of their timeouts. Remember, Hoban is now out of timeouts with a minute 14 to play. Obviously, it comes down to this. They get a first down, they can kneel it out, game over. If they don't, they'll have to make a decision on fourth and whatever that might be. Well, if you just tuned in or if you've been tuning in and out throughout the course of the evening, 31 combined points in the first half, zero since then. Great defensive play. That's as simple as it is. Neither offense has played particularly poorly. It's just been great, solid defense like you would expect from championship caliber teams. Third and two from the Maslin 30. Pfeiffer up the middle, it's really close. We'll see where they spot it. Clock is running at 106 and now they stop the clock. He needs the 32 yard line for a first down. They'll measure it. Meanwhile, Luke Bauer, you can see him there. Looks like his left elbow might be uh, bothering him a bit. Maslin fans are nervously watching the chains. First down, Tigers! And Maslin can kneel it out as they'll knock out the four-time defending state champions. Just an impressive performance the entire year for the Tigers, but particularly tonight. This is as far and as close as they've been pushed the entire year, and the way that this defense responded tonight has really been impressive. Victory formation for the orange and black. But Maslin has to call timeout first. Meanwhile, the Avon Eagles lead Avon Lake 20 to three in the fourth quarter of that game. So it looks like Avon and Maslin in the state semifinals next week, region five against region six. The winner of that game will play in Canton the weekend, December 5th, 6th, and 7th, as the Knights fans stunningly head for the gates. And the Tiger faithful get ready for a very big party. And your hats have to go off to the Hoban Knights, Coach Terrell, and, and these past couple groups of players. Um, you know, it, it's been an impressive run. It, you know, that, that's, that all, it's all it comes down to. And again, I, I talked about it earlier. Every year is a different group of kids, and sometimes it's, it's difficult to overcome the weight of some of those performances over the last couple of years. So hats off to these kids. They've, they've performed well this year, but it, it looks like this is Maslin's, Maslin's moment. Aiden Longwell takes a knee. They'll have to do it at least once more. They haven't reset the play clock, which is kind of odd. <laughs> Things are ticking down. They know they've got to at least take one more. There it goes. But as soon as they kneel it down once inside 40, it'll be over for the Knights.
perhaps the most storied win in the history of Massillon football. The Tigers have knocked out Goliath. Archbishop Hoban, 22 games in a row, no more. And the Tigers are on to the state semifinals. We expected Every, we expected a little bit of everything. We expected some big plays out of some really impressive offensive performers. But I think the second half showed both these teams, but in particular the Maslin Tigers, they've got a defense that I think can get them another couple wins. Pure jubilation over in Maslin. And again, this is a program, I know we talked about the fact they just beat the team that's won four in a row. But Massillon's goal at the beginning of the year wasn't beat Archbishop Hoban. Their goal was to win a state championship. And so perhaps, while you certainly see some pretty joyful Tigers, as they should be, this is a Massillon team that knows they've still got two more games to win if they want to accomplish what they set out to at the beginning of the year. But this was certainly a big obstacle. That laser focus, it, it comes from the top down. Coach Moore has done an excellent job of keeping these players focused. There have been big games along the way. They've had the rivalry matchups. They had this Hoban team lurking off in the distance. So a tribute, really, to the coaching staff and all these players here at Maslin. Maslin goes to 13-0. Archbishop Hoban finishes their season with a record of 11 and two, losing only to St. Ignatius and to the Massillon Tigers. This has been a lot of fun. Really appreciate you joining us tonight here from the University of Akron, where the Massillon Tigers, probably not fair to say an upset because perhaps Massillon was even favored coming into this game, the regional final. For Doug Phillips and for our entire production crew led by Jason Feaster, I'm Brendan Gulick. The Tigers slay the Knights tonight, 17-14, and Massillon is on to the state semifinals. They'll play the Avon Eagles next week on either Friday or Saturday night, and we'll have you covered on Spectrum News 1. I joined cosmetology because I've always loved coloring hair and different colors and makeup. I joined media because I've always had a passion for all things related to media. I've always had a passion for teaching other people, especially topics that I'm interested in. I want to pursue a career as an orthopedic surgeon, and so when I saw that we had this class, I immediately circled it on my schedule and was excited to join. This class has made me better because it made me very responsible. I like the relationships that I've developed in this class. The girls that are in here with me, I've really grown close with all of them. I joined this class because I enjoy helping others and I want to make a difference. Even like just making something and having people go, wow, that's really interesting. It means the world. It was just a really good environment to be in. It was real hands-on and it was just something I really wanted to do.
I joined the construction trades to gain experience in the job I want in the future. Everything that this class has taught me will account for my career in the future. Before I came to this class, I was unemployed and Ms. Markley helped me get a job. I'm going to use what I learned in manufacturing in order to better decide my career. It gave me more knowledge on cars and gave me plans to go in the auto industry. Maslin CTE works for me. 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 Works for me. For me. For me. For me. Maslin CTE works for me.